Hi, and thank you all very much for letting me come here and talk. My company, uh, which we're working on, is called Diagnose Early. What we do is capture breath and diagnose cancer. <laughs> cancer is a worldwide phenomena. There's 18 million new cases per year, 9 million deaths per year. And if you think about it, and I've thought about this a lot, every cancer death is preventable if it's caught early enough. And I want to stop and emphasize that. Every cancer is preventable if it's caught early enough. The problem, and we just heard a presentation on it, is tests are too expensive. There's a lot of problem with patient compliance and scheduling and access to health care and a big lack of availability worldwide. Because when I speak about this, I speak about this on a worldwide issue. And that's the way I think of this problem. What we do at Diagnose Early is the same way you get your blood drawn now, samples stored and sent to a clinical lab, we capture the compounds in your breath, store them, and send them to a centralized lab, and have the doctor explain to you what's going on. So we're not trying to step out of any medical practice. And if anybody in this room has gone around the world, you know once you deal with health, you deal with governments, and you deal with regulations. And you better be staying in the same line that everybody's getting care today. Because if you step out of it, you'll get a lot of resistance. If you improve it at a lower cost, you'll get a lot of help. Chinese medicine is known for thousands of years that you could determine the health of a patient by examining their breath. A traditional Chinese medicine doctor does four things. Look, listen, smell, and check your pulse. What has happened is a lot of that information has been lost over the years. I'm a hospitalist at Stanford. I'm a doctor. I've smelled cancer on a patient. We all have. Everyone who's a, a physician here has. But we never were trained in it the way a chi traditional Chinese medicine doctor 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 years was, where they would smell with a teacher day after day. If you try to describe a smell, I'm horrible at it. I'll say, metallic. Well, what does that mean? But what we've learned is you can capture these compounds. Dogs can detect eight different types of cancer smelling these VOCs. Israeli scientists have used 13 of these VOCs to determine eight different types of cancer, as well as several neurological diseases. The key, the key, and I just want to say is every time you breathe out, you breathe out two to 3,000 volatile organic compounds. And this is a metabolic snapshot of the health of your body. Um, what is the key, and our competitors using uh, technology from the oil and petroleum industry capture uh, a certain percentage of the VOCs while we capture all of them and we preserve the ratios. We use a physical process while they use a chemical process. So the key is to capture all the compounds and preserve them in the exact ratios that are present in your body. Um, and our, our physical process accomplishes that. Um, our tests are much cheaper than our main competitor. Uh, where they take 10 minutes with a mask and we, we have you breathe into a tube for six seconds because we feel patient compliance and cost is critical um, to uh, patient acceptance of this technology. We are, at heart, a cancer data platform. We have an independent breath-based biomarker. We'll collect the data. We use uh, working with our team. They uh, come up with an algorithm and big data analytics uh, and then use that to produce insights and diagnostics uh, for the healthcare industry here and around the world. We've been uh, incorporated a year ago, myself and my partner, um, which I'll, I'll present at the end, my partners. Uh, for the first year, we worked on our breath capture technology, our uh, gas chromatography, mass spectroscopy lab, uh, which is in Newark, California, patents, technology, hired the team. Um, as we move forward in the summer, we're starting uh, clinical trials at Stanford, where I'm a physician. Uh, we're, we're getting baselines, and we have plans for a 15,000-person study uh, in Q4. We've presented our IRB uh, to the Institutional Review Board at Stanford for an expedited process. And this is very important. 
Uh, we are an FDA one, FDA class one, 510 cleared technology. Uh, we will be regulated under the CLIA laboratory development t test, LDT. Um, and there's some uh, particulars you have to follow, but uh, we're following very closely with our regulatory team so that we make sure we stay under that category of regulation. Who's, a, who's afraid of the FDA in this room? No. <laughs> <laughs> These are the uh, tests we'll be performing at Stanford. Um, there'll be eight um, cancer tests, but also um, a couple neurological diseases. Um, my wife has Parkinson's disease, and that was what kind of prompted me to, to start this company. Um, and we're working very closely with the Sergey Brin Foundation. I'm going to Japan um, at the end of this uh, month with uh, Jenny Brin, uh, Sergey's mother, uh, who has, unfortunately, Parkinson's disease. And we're uh, working with that uh, group. And our um, main, uh, one of the uh, employees, founders, uh, Dr. Chris Locke is a professor of neurology at Stanford and is going to uh, help us run all our clinical trials there. Um, and so we have that little bit of that home field advantage at Stanford. It's, it's where I've worked for the last 20 years. Just to sum up, sum up the demand is high. Um, there's many people who need this technology, and I spoke earlier about regulation. I'm not naive. I've worked and I've been to China four times. Uh, I've met the mayor of Beijing talking about this uh, technology. Um, there's also opportunities for early revenue. Um, liquid biopsy companies uh, need uh, independent biomarkers to improve their tests and Big Pharma needs uh, information to show their uh, uh, therapies are effective. Uh, we've raised 1.6 million. We're closing our 2 million round. We're finishing our StartX demo day and kind of just taking, you know, essentially five to 10 meetings for the next week or two. Uh, we have an amazing team. Uh, Dr. Michael Levitt, one of our co-founders, won the Nobel Prize in 2013. Chris Wheeler, uh, Harvard MBA. Myself, I'm an MD, PhD at Stanford. I'm going quick, 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 quick. PhD, 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 PhD. That's us. Sorry, I went over. I never go over. Okay. Thank you very much for any questions. Uh, it's actually great to have you here. Actually, um, Dean Loy Minor, the Dean of Medicine at Stanford, is a good friend of mine. So oh, it's great okay, to great. Uh, have a medical doctor from Stanford. Um, uh, actually, you know, on, on what you do, it's diagnostic, right? That's what you're trying to do. Um, I, I guess the question is really, you know, why, you know, I guess, why is it? A must, I mean, if you could, I mean, you know, I think diagnostic people's general idea is, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a must have. Uh, it, it's, a, it's sort of a good to have kind Here's of thing. Here's what right? I would say. You and everyone in this room knows or will know someone that will die of a cancer that could have been cured. Yes. Yes, of course. You know, once you kind of see that, and then you see all the other ways, a di like my wife has Parkinson's disease. Right. She wants a treatment. And to have a treatment, you need an independent test. So it's one of those things, is it's not hard to talk to researchers and people doing it and say, how could we make it better? You know, um, With Theranos, which we spoke about earlier, which liquid biopsy taking, you know, Grail raised $1.8 billion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a lot of money out of the room. You know, the, the diagnostic world is a, is a tough world to get to. Correct. So yeah. my question is, I mean, it boils down yeah. to, uh, really, how are we doing a lot? I mean, how can, I mean, why are we doing, why is our technology and why are the things that we do, including yeah. business model, why are we, how can we actually be better than our competitors? What, what I like, and I think it gets back to the previous talks, is I like the idea of, this is me, so I'm, is bundling everything together. What I see in the future is you'll get your, you'll have your genome already known, you'll have proteomic samples to see what's going on. You have your liquid biopsy. You'll have your breath, which is metabolomics, your exposures, and they'll put it together in a personal, precise cancer screening strategy for you every year. Now, I met Mayor Chen, who's in charge of 0.5% of the population in this world. <laughs> you know, he runs, two, he's in charge of 23 million people. He understands the idea. If you can get 2 or 3% better every year, that's how you improve. A lot of us want, you know, everything, you know, but when you talk about just get better, get better, get better, you do that 10, 15 years, 
we're in a totally different place. But that, that's the answer. That's the way I see it. But it's, we're building something that's going to be of use to so many different places that you can just, you, you can almost, I don't know if you know the startup, stay focused. <laughs> and then we go, like, oh, look over there, shiny light. You know, we're staying focused on cancer and a couple of neurological diseases. But we see how this technology can be used by other people. We want to get it out there. Thank you for a wonderful presenta presentation and uh, a lot of solid PhDs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's really sad because the only person in our company that doesn't have a PhD is my co-founder, Chris Wheeler, who got a Harvard MBA. But, <laughs> but we're, we're all from Stanford except from him and one Berkeley guy. And then he just, he's just odd man out with his Harvard MBA. Um, a question, two parts. The first part, so is you mentioned FDA out. D T right? Yeah. No, no, no. So, oh, sorry. Uh -huh. I never put those two words together. Okay. CLIA in LDT is when you don't deal with the FDA. We are FDA cleared, meaning, and and we can. Everybody in this room has spent time. This is one of these, you know, this is American regulatory world. So what we're saying is the FDA has no role in, and we have a lot of, in, in 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 governing and restricting us. It's the CLIA LDT lab that says we're doing everything correctly. So, and we can talk about it. this is, uh, some other people in this room know this answer as well, but, but we're uh, saying we're not FDA regulated. Uh, and the, uh, my qu second part of my, my question connected to the first part. So you're raising uh, a, a additional two, right? Yeah. And uh, together 3.5, and uh, what's possible milestones and? Uh, so, um, so our, our milestones for the next step is very clear. It's to get 1,000 patients to a solid baseline, to have a clinical signal from one of these tests, and then to be moving into our large 15,000 patient study. We feel that's our, and just to be, you know, this is a startup world, Series A. That's our Series A. What we have now is the tech, the team, and everything set up. Yeah, I like your you know, input, output, and then you're getting the easier way to test diagnostic, you know, compared to the last one. And even the <laughs> earlier for the yeah. five, 10 years testing before that. Uh, seems like you have a, a group of professionals, you know, Harvard, mm. Stanford, physician and whatnot. Uh, when you hit the real world, the go-to market, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your plan, how to roll it out? So it's interesting, uh, on the business side, what we anticipate is, because we've gone around the world, and if everybody in the world is, everybody does healthcare differently. You know, so what we see actually is a franchise model where we will take the Middle East, find a partner, and basically you know, allow them our technology with a, with a buyback option for some X amount of time. Go to, because China is a different market than Japan, is a different market from South Korea. Don't think you know everything. Work with somebody there on the ground who can protect your technology, who has the government contacts. You have to have government contacts if you're going to make anything happen in healthcare. So find a partner. And that's really has how we see as we go forward. There's, you know, obviously Johnson & Johnson's the big companies that are, you know, billions and billions. They can come in. But what we see moving forward is working with different regions around the world um, to get our technology out. But it's a great question. Um, I was going to say that other question. What are the biomarkers and then how can you yeah. identify them? And, and yeah. Yeah. Um, keep it on, keep it on, keep it on. And, and so, so again, this is, and the way to think about it is there's two to 3,000 of these compounds. And these are the compounds that carry out all the chemical activities in your body. These are the ones that the proteins make. Um, there's something called the Warburg phenomena that when you have cancer, you do more uh, glycolysis than oxidative phosphorylation. So what happens is it's not going to be one biomarker. It's the ratio. Um, and, and that's where... So, so, and, and we can talk about it afterwards, but these are all the alkenes, aldehydes that you, you learned in chemistry. Yeah. So the, so the initial study by the Israeli study was a small, they were 1,400 patients, and there was, for 
all the different spectrums. For any individual cancer, it was 100 patients. They were about 86% sensitivity and specificity. We anticipate with our 15,000 patient study, we're gonna do better. But a lot of this is essentially why we're doing studies at Stanford, to, to get that data. Yeah. And that's exactly the, the questions we're working on. You know, you start with stage four or three, but you want to be down to two and one. And this is what the liquid biopsy people are really struggling with because they're 40, 55, 70, 90. And that's why we're doing the study. Well, it, we don't know as far as, nobody sat down other than these smaller studies to go, okay, Let's systematically work on it. Um, and that's where doing, you need numbers, you know, you, you know to the larger studies where we're gonna get that answer, but that's a great question. Okay, thank you all very much, I really appreciate it.